What's up, everybody, and welcome to the first video of Super Bowl 56 DFS strategy. Today, we're here to talk about cash game strategy and lineup construction, low risk builds for FanDuel and DraftKings for the upcoming Super Bowl, Los Angeles Rams, Cincinnati Bengals. I'm Brian Jester, co founder here at Occupy Fantasy, joined today by our NFL writer, Chris Rooney. Makes his own projections. It's going to be a great insight for this particular video. Chris, what's up, man? Brian, it's always a pleasure to talk to you about any football slate we have going on. I know Rams Super Bowls are kind of near and dear to your heart, so hopefully we can wrap our minds around this one and, and set ourselves up to have some more success this year, right? Very big fan of Rams Super Bowls indeed, that's for sure. So in this video, we'll talk about general showdown low-risk strategy for 50-50s, double-ups, and head-to-heads. We'll talk about Chris's projections and what they mean for this particular slate and how to build a proper low risk lineup on either FanDuel or DraftKings. And it'll be about 10 minutes long. Quick video to the point to get you what you need. Make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button below this video. We're going to have a bunch of types of these types of videos over the next week or so for different contest types on both sites, small field, large field, FanDuel, DraftKings everything you need. So make sure you subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Any questions you have about this particular contest type or this construction, comment on the video below. Any questions you have about anything else, you can always comment too. We'll answer them as well. But join our Discord server. We'll be in there pretty much 24-7 through the Super Bowl. Click the join button below this video. So Chris, low risk contest, 50-50s, double ups, head to heads, a little bit of a different beast for showdown compared to classic slates. And you and I, we got together with Justin Freeman of Run the Sims. We put out the showdown guides last year for all the research that we put into it. From a high level, what is the general goal that we're looking to do in a showdown low risk contest? Well, Brian, I think you've done a great job really all year long, uh, distilling this for our subscribers here on YouTube with your 10 minute videos and every single showdown game. We want to try to lock up all the scoring in low-risk contests. And some offenses make that easier to do than others. And unfortunately for this Super Bowl, this is not one of those Super, uh, Super Bowl games where the offenses will allow us to do that fairly easily. In general, we want to try to get both starting quarterbacks, both starting running backs, if they are bell cows, into our lineups. This year, we have a little bit of a different situation with the Rams where they've kind of changed who their bell cow running back is throughout the season. And obviously they have the most... Uh, popular wide receiver in the NFL this season that sort of dominates all of the opportunities to touch the football. So it is going to force us into some more creative constructions, I would say, in low-risk contests if you choose to play them this week. Right, and one of the big edges that we have in showdown contests is, and, and we we see this in a lot of sports where high floor is important for showdown, for League of Legends, MMA, where really what you want to try to do is maximize win probability in those sports. And in this sport as well, in a different way, you only have to beat half the field. And we see a lot of times the field maximizes median projections, which in some cases makes sense, but there's a lot of risk involved there. Really, you want to minimize the risk when you're playing 50-50s, double-ups, and head-to-heads. And by trying to lock up all the scoring with the running backs and the quarterbacks, and again, this works especially well over on FanDuel, that helps you. If you get all the scoring from the game into your lineup, that generally means you have a really good shot of getting into the top half of your contest. But as you said, Chris, we have the Cooper Cup scenario where Cooper Cup is priced pretty affordably compared to where he has been throughout most of the season in showdown slates. But I mean, if you look at his game logs, and I'm sure your projections show this as well, I mean, the dude is pretty much a lock for 17 fantasy points, if not 20 plus fantasy points, pretty much every game that he plays. So despite him not being a quarterback or running back, he has to be the first guy you put into your lineup, right? Absolutely, in this format. I mean, I think I mentioned in our staff chat, went over 20 DraftKings fantasy points in eight of the, I think it's 20 games now the Rams have played this year. So the scenario where Cooper Cup is not involved in the optimal low-risk lineup is basically he gets injured early in the game. Like, I really don't think there's any other scenario where he's not going to be optimal for your cash game lineups in this Super Bowl, so you're going to want to have him in there. Biggest decision is going to be, you know, do you just want to make him your lowest captain, or do we flex him? We probably need to flex him to, to get more of these uh, high floor players in our lineups and lowers contests. You know, the, the Joe Burrows, the Matt Stafford's, the Joe Mixon's even uh, Cam Akers, who's priced pretty affordably. Uh, and that usually leads us to running something like, you know, something gross, like a kicker or a defense captain to kind of fit that. I think this game a little on the higher side in terms of totals, I think it's a 49 point total right now would probably lean towards trying to find builds 
with either a, a low price acres or maybe like Matt Gay or Evan McPherson at, at captain to try to build my cash game lineups. Full disclosure, haven't really tried to build an effective one yet. It's tough. It's really tough to build. And one of the big issues is, especially on DraftKings, right? A lot of times we'll get a mispriced player and it doesn't have to be egregiously mispriced, but somewhat mispriced for their role below the kickers and defenses. So if we scroll down here and we see that the kickers in the flex position, we have McPherson and Gay are at 4K and 3,800 respectively. The defenses are 3,400 and 3,200. However, beyond that, the only one with a somewhat decent role is Samaj P. Ryan, and he only plays a handful of snaps per game. And then Ben Skoranek, who played a little bit more in last week's game, but doesn't play a ton mm -hmm. in general. But no one mispriced down here that we can just, we know the field's going to play them a ton get them in their lineups and allows us to captain Cooper Cup, which means, like you said, Chris, we probably have to flex him on DraftKings. And if that's the case, without a major value like that, we have to get rid of one of the quarterbacks, one of the running backs. So who are you leaning towards? Because Akers is technically underpriced based on projections at 6,400, but his role is also less secure, which isn't really a, something we want to deal with in a low-risk environment. And he's been, he's been pretty inefficient since, since coming back from this Achilles injury. Obviously, props to Cam Akers. I mean, very impressive that he was able to work back so quickly from a brutal injury and get back on the field. So um, really think that if you do want to fade at one of these guys, Cam Akers would be the one. I did mention that a captain play with Akers, though, just makes sense for me from a salary standpoint, right? Because it does allow you to fit a little bit more in your other flex positions. Uh, but just kind of looking through this and working through the lobby with you, I mean, I definitely can see the construction where you go like Matt Gay or Rams defense captain because they're the favorite side. And then we probably go with like Stafford Cup and then try to get, you know, Mixon Burrow in there. There's definitely ways for us to do that, especially using those punt plays and Perrine and, and Skoranek would probably be as far down as I would go here on DraftKings uh, on this slate. For sure, for sure. And I'm just playing around with it now as well. I mean, you're going to have to make a decision between Akers and Mixon, or maybe both, depending on this game. And that's what you're going to have to deal with. But I think, Chris, so from a high level, and we'll talk about this in the Daily Plug once it's up next week, but Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford, Joe Burrow, the three guys you have to get into your lineup on DraftKings, right? I would think so. I mean, they're, they're definitely the safest plays. Uh, definitely don't see that in really any game script we can imagine they're probably still going to get the majority of the touches in their offenses the quarterbacks are obvious right so um definitely feel like that's a good place to start here for sure and we do have the injuries to the tight end cj uzama tyler higby dylan both with mcl sprains it seems like higby a little more optimistic in playing than uzama is but again we have two weeks to figure this out DraftKings didn't want to deal with it they priced higby's backup blanton just 200 dollars less and they did the same thing with Uzama's backup, Drew Sample, at $200 less as well, which doesn't give us a free square in low-risk contests if they had to price them like they normally do. However, Chris, as we move over to FanDuel, which is always a little bit of a different beast when it comes to low-risk contests, this may help us out because Blanton priced up at 8K, but Drew Sample is 6500 if he's the starting tight end. That can provide some salary savings. So let's keep that in mind as we go through it here because Cup is 16 k a little bit less than he normally is on FanDuel. Stafford and Burrow following behind him. And then Akers over here is 10K. So what are you thinking from the two quarterbacks, two running back, Cooper Cup deal on FanDuel? It does feel like it's a little more doable for us to get these running backs and Cooper Cup in there. I, I do seem, it seems even with the tight end value, right? We would have to probably play one quarterback to get all those guys in, right? So I'm a little hesitant to basically i think when we get around to the daily plug this week we, we're probably still going to recommend not to go super heavy into these low risk contests because the pricing is pretty difficult uh and, and i just don't like a low risk lineup where you can't really get both quarterbacks in there so but it is a little more feasible on fanduel you're right to point that out right so cup stafford burrow all 15k or more Mixon twelve thousand five hundred. acres is 10k kickers in that 9k range and if you try to fit cooper cup Joe Burrow, Matthew Stafford, that's 67.50 left per player. And as we talked about on DraftKings, it's the same thing over here, Chris, where P. Ryan is 7K, Sample 6,500, Skoranek 6K, but these guys aren't going to play a ton and no one below them is even going to touch the field. So like you said, you're going to have to go without one of Stafford or Burrow. What do your projections say is the way to go, especially if we play cup at captain? If we are going to go with the medium projection here, which is 
Cooper Cup had 35% of the targets for Matt Stafford this year. It's going to dominate the opportunity in the passing game for them. Then your exposure to the passing game with the Rams in lowers contests is almost certainly most likely going to come from Cooper Cup and not Matthew Stafford. So that means to me, I think that the field is going to play Cooper Cup and Joe Burrow, and they will axe Matthew Stafford. Regardless of whether uh, Stafford projects a little higher than Burrow, which is actually how I have it, a um, little bit of a lesson here in DFS. We're not just building a lineup that projects for the most points. We're trying to get um, lineups that'll fit into the, the salary criteria. And obviously that will beat our opponents, right? It does feel like Joe Burrow being a little cheaper than Matthew Stafford. And if you are going to bet on Cup continuing to be the player he's been all year long for one more week, Matthew Stafford will be the one that people will leave out of their lineups, especially on the FanDuel side of things where we have one less spot to work with. Exactly. And if you do that, you can, you're can you able to get both Mixon and Akers and punt the fifth and final spot, which seems to be the best approach, barring any injury news. So, Chris, any final thoughts on low-risk contests for this week? It's very difficult. A little bit different dynamics on FanDuel and DraftKings. But any final pieces of advice for people who are looking? Again, we are still a little over a week out. Not sure how much is going to change, but the strategy from a high level is still going to be there. So any final piece of advice for people looking to play 50-50s, double-ups, or head-to-heads for the Super Bowl? Say, and, and, you know, I love playing those contests. You and I talk about this all the time, but this is the best uh, tournament slate that there is for uh, a, a single game uh, in the NFL, right? The Super Bowl. There's the biggest contests that are available really anywhere that you want to play. So this does feel like it's a great opportunity to take some risks, to play in some, some tournaments more often than you normally would. Uh, we're already being forced to leave some of the highest four floor players out of our lineups if we wanted to play lowest contests anyway which is sort of always an indicator for us that we should probably be playing more tournaments uh, when we get that kind of setup. So I would say if you like lowers contests, uh, definitely a great place to play if you're new to DFS and you want to consider that as just kind of a way to have some action on the game next weekend. But I would actually con- consider, uh, and I am personally considering, just playing a little more tournaments this, this game around. And if you want advice for your tournament lineups, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we'll be releasing a small field that's less than 500 player uh, strategy for FanDuel and DraftKings. We'll have separate videos for large field FanDuel and DraftKings. Lots of great videos for the Super Bowl coming up. We'll have our props uh, our props discussion here on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Any questions, comment on the video below or hop in our Discord server. Go follow Chris on Twitter at RooneyFFB. Follow me at BrianJesterFF. Follow us at Occupy Fantasy. Thanks for listening. Lots of content coming your way for the Super Bowl. Let's get ready for it. <laughs>